thank you so much for joining me in this conversation about how to use the Project Canvas to elevate leadership in your organization. And I think the first question that I, I really have is this thing that you talked about, Scott, around roles versus compliance or the work versus compliance. Can you just talk a little bit more about like what you meant by that? Sure. I think, uh, you know, we as a system, we, when all the standards changed and we had such massive change to drive, we just basically created a compliance based system. Like, have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Check, 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 check. You're done. Move on to the next thing. The problem with that was, is that all of a sudden we have all these really talented, gifted leaders and we're hamstringing them because they're they're and we're, we're reformulating their minds around a compliance model and limiting their leadership growth and what they're able to do with their buildings. So, you know, making that switch from compliance to let's identify the tasks, let's put our best leaders on it. But then at the same time in that process, we're developing that next generation of leaders or that next round of leaders to step up because we're giving them opportunities to lead and they're seeing the purpose behind the work that we're doing. Yeah, I like that. And I mean, really also what you're saying is you're giving some economy at the front line where people, the work is actually happening. Mm -hmm. And so Jeff, can you talk a little bit about how you're helping people change their mindset around this? Because I, I'm imagining they're just not used to it. And I'd be curious, like, how do we change people's thinking around this? Because it feels ambiguous and unsafe in some ways for them. Well, I think it is a, a, a shift in, you know, the mindset of how we look at how we would traditionally plan for something. But when you get the opportunity to see the different roles and can capitalize on people's different strengths and they're actually seeing how their strength can um, be an asset to the bigger picture of the organization or of the project that you're working on in that particular moment, they'll see that the um, actual project canvas breaks down some of those barriers and insecurities to where it's not, they're not going to go into the project wondering what their role is and wondering if they're going to have, um, you know, feel comfortable about it. And then at the same time, there's the support if they do want to step out of their comfort zone and um, have the different people on the team help them grow professionally and in whatever the particular project may be. Yeah, I like that idea of how you're like elevating all of the people resources that you have and looking across the district to see where the needs are and how do you empower the team to create and do the work and kind of have ownership of the work as opposed to you owning a lot of the planning and the, and the tasks and then delegating those things. How, one, can you describe a little bit about that, that shift and then some of the realizations and ahas you gained just in terms of your own leadership style and the, and the benefits of that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we started the Project Canvas, um, me and my leadership team started working through the roles and started at, you know, um, when we did the whole identifying, grouping them together and then naming that role, what, what sounds like a good name for this role? And, and as that happened, we started saying, well, this fits that particular teacher or that particular team member perfectly. Like they would be so good at that role. And so then when we, we brought the group together of people that we had, had thought would be good with this, we first, before we did anything, we named the roles and they started self-identifying themselves. They started being like, oh, that's gonna be that person. Oh, that's gonna, oh that'll be me right there. And they were right, like they, had, they, hit, they hit the nail on the head. So it was just so eye-opening for me that I had all these people who are wanting to use their strengths and, and have these great abilities that where I was trying to control and um, maybe not give them extra work to do or try to make sure myself that things were done the right way that I was actually making a possibly making a project not be as successful as it could be whenever there are people who could take every aspect of that project and make every part of it so much better and and I'm growing leaders and I'm and I'm you know I'm hopefully making a place that someone who wants to grow now wants to come to my schools so it's actually making my whole school better because now this is a place, hey, that's where I want to go because they involve me in the process. So um, it, it's, it's just, it's helped in so many different ways. I, I know that it's, it feels like letting go of those controls seem a little bit sketchy to get the work done sometimes. How, how long does that actually 
take to like for your mindset as a leader mm -hmm. to change you think it's probably been the most challenging part and it's just requires discipline on my part because you know what what i realized is is like i always i've always envisioned myself as a really collaborative leader because we sit around the table and we make decisions together but as my wife points out like I tend to convince everybody that I'm right. And, and, and so a good friend of mine, when we started the, uh, the COVID work, a good friend of mine, like she kind of punched me in the nose and she said, Scott, like your team has slowed down because they're trying to figure out when they're in with their teams, they're trying to figure out what you want them to do rather than making the decisions themselves. And I had to really, I had to really like self-examine and step back and say like, I got to start doing more one-to-one so I can figure out and just asking the question, you know, where do you need support? Uh, how how are you doing? What can, and then I, I mean, like probably I'm probably the biggest obstacle to this transition because I have to get out of my own way and allow my people to just roll and, and not kind of like you know in the process of sitting around the table checking in. I think that's the great part about the canvas is is you've truly got to turn loose of those teams and let them go do their work. And I'm sure in the beginning there's like inconsistency across projects and stuff. What do you think? your team needs to be trained on in terms of helping coach the people doing the work? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question, Anthony. I think, you know, um, being patient enough to let it organically mold into what the direction it needs to be. I mean, having the patience to allow it to come to fruition from within the way the system automatically sets this up and to have the trust in it. You, you said from the very beginning, what was the kind of weird feeling that you had to step back? And, and it is, it's giving up some of that control and giving up some of that desire to step in and fix something. And then when, you know, and just have that coaching mindset that you asked about to where we're here to support you, tell me what you need versus um, me telling you what you need to do to fix that. How has this kind of shift in the way the district operates impacted the way you think about preparing students? And has there been any shift in the way teachers think about what they need to do with students and how they interact with them? Just because, you know, if you're, as an organization, you're shifting from tactical things to more supportive ways of helping people grow and develop their skills. It's it's just a very different environment. Yeah, I think I think what it is, to be honest, is it's the leaders finally catching up with the way we've been telling teachers to do it for a while. Um, you know, a common complaint for teachers, even back when I was teaching, was, wow, I just sat there for six hours and had someone talk to me directly about not standing there talking to people directly. And so, you know... <laughs> it's we're finally leading by example. We're saying, you know, this is what we've been saying. We want you guys to do with the students. And now we're doing it. And the teachers are getting to see it play out in an actual work environment. And so I think that's going to shift down to the learners and the teachers are going to be saying, hey, this is this is what the, the work environment you're coming into. Like I'm as a teacher, I'm taking part in it now. So I can actually say this is what's better. You don't need me up here telling you exactly what to do. You need me to guide you and then set you free. And um, so I think it's a, the leaders finally catching up a little bit. Top of mind for all districts around the country is how you're gonna return to school in the fall. And uh, obviously there's a ton of planning that goes into multiple unknown scenarios that you have to develop. Now that you've been doing the work this way, what? 12 months from now, what would, where would you imagine the district being and what kinds of traits would you hope that you're able to work on from now until, you know, a year from now that help propel you into a future that is dramatically better than the one, the system that you had before? So, and it's, it's interesting because with the t parents being the ones being the primary deliverers of instruction and teachers having to learn how to support, it changed that relationship dramatically than before when we called. So that's a trait mm -hmm. that I would hope we can build in and communicate is that t uh, parent teacher communication is not driven by problems, but is driven by partnership and working mm -hmm. together for the common good of the, the children. There's not an off button on our schools. We're just continually on for learning. 
And, yeah, I mean, I, I like that though, because, uh, you know, like in the future, work isn't nine to five anymore either. I mean, right. we're, we're not working off those fixed schedules. And quite frankly, you're probably all experiencing, I know I am, is just like the commingling and integration of work and life is just insane right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I'll start with Mitch this time. What, what do you think? And then we'll close out with Jeff. There's no reason not to be providing these resources and this, um, this learning style, no matter what, even if, when we go back to, you know, normal and school is, you know, in session all the time. Um, I hope we're using our online resources for anybody who happens to be sick, who happens to have a snow day, who happens to be needing to go to a, a wedding out of town. You know, we've always been so well, you know, they're missing today. So when they get back, they can make up their work. And, and now it's like, why were we doing that? Like, why, are we, why have we waited for something like this to realize that we have all these tools that even when they go home and the parents like, what did you learn today? Well, I'll just get on your Google Classroom and find out what you learned today because I know it's there, you know? Well, I was going to say to build off of what Scott and Mitch already said, how teachers just jumped in and, you know, threw out the, uh, yeah, they were uncomfortable, but they threw out the old expectation of this is how we've always done it and I've got to move forward. And I just hope that that mindset continues to uh, expand because it was remarkable to get the teacher feedback. Yeah, one of the things that I hear you guys saying, and in particular your comments, Jeff, is when the teams feel and the teachers feel just a, a little bit of discomfort, as a organization, you know that they're learning. That's when learning is happening, right? It's just like zone proximal development for kids is, you know, if it's too hard, then they're going to feel like they're failing. If it's too easy, then they're going to be disengaged and not pay attention. And when you're able to calibrate your professional learning so that people feel just enough discomfort where, you know, people are growing and expanding their minds.